Just the whole time looked really quite comfortable. So you think he was given an easy ride because some are saying that the questioning was, was more robust today. It was more robust, um, but it's more robust within the confines of some respectable establishment figures asking people, uh, many of whom they know, uh, questions that are really quite gentle and just really asking them to put the pieces uh, of the jigsaw in place. But we will still learn some things, and we learned some things today, such as this plethora of um, informal and personal e um, letters between Tony Blair and George Bush, in which he said, as people like myself have been saying all the way through from the Crawford summit in April 2002, that Tony Blair had said to George Bush, we're with you all the way. We learned that, but also a lot of Alistair Campbell's answers really did beg a belief, this idea um, that somehow the September dossier was cautious and conservative, uh, A, in its use of the intelligence, and B, in its language. Uh, it's interesting that in um, Holland today there's been an inquiry which actually has found the war was illegal. It's not had much coverage alongside the Chilcot inquiry, but, but that's something interesting to look at as well, isn't it? It is, and the whole question of the Attorney General, the UK Attorney General's legal advice uh, on the eve of war was extremely contentious. Um, people like myself and others who were following the Iraq war on the eve very carefully and indeed uh, could see the extent to which Lord Goldsmith was prevailed upon to produce a form of legal advice that just about got in under the wire. And all the way through, you have the impression, even through this comparatively gentle questioning from the inquiry, that officials and politicians were simply doing Tony Blair's bidding, and Tony Blair was simply telling, as almost Alistair Campbell gave away today, telling George Bush, we're with you all the way. Okay, thank you very much, John Kampfner. Well, uh, the former Attorney General and Tony Blair will be giving evidence to the Chilcot inquiry uh, towards the end of this month, beginning of next, so full coverage, of course, here on BBC News. That's all somewhere away, though. Let's find out how the weather is looking. Much more pressing, Elizabeth can tell us. Hi. Hello there. We're going to take a slightly more extended look at the weather now through the rest of this week on into the weekend. But first of all, starting with the short term, and it's been pretty nasty across southwestern parts of Britain through the day today. And that process continuing tonight. The reason this weather front, which is butting up against that very cold air that's been with us for quite some time, and that has been bringing some very heavy snow. Indeed, we do still have weather warnings in force for that heavy snow across uh, Wales and the southwest of England, and that will continue for a good while yet. But the area of snow will will start to move a little bit further northwards and eastwards through tonight, up towards the Midlands, southeast England. So we're expecting a covering of snow here, but generally it'll be lighter and patchier than we've seen further west. Temperatures overnight dipping down to freezing, so ice will be a problem. Generally a quieter night, though, across the northern parts of Britain. Now, as we go through Wednesday, we've still got our weather front. It's a fairly slow-moving affair, but it will start to edge a little bit further northwards and eastwards as we go through the day. One thing you'll notice is that the winds will start to ease down a little bit, so they'll become less of a problem, should be less drifting. There's the area of snow, as you can see, becoming increasingly light and patchy in time as it moves its way gradually up towards northern England, starting to push into parts of Scotland as well. Bit of a dull and grey day there for parts of Northern Ireland, but hopefully not too much in the way of snow. So by the afternoon, it'll all have cleared through the southwest of England, even though it could brighten up a bit here, temperatures up to 7 degrees or so, but staying very cold across southern and eastern parts, and there will be some snow around, clearing to the north of London, I think, but there will be some patchy outbreaks of snow across East Anglia, through the Midlands, and up towards northern England as well. So we could see a couple of centimetres on the ground here, maybe an inch or two in places. As we head up towards Scotland, there will be some further snow, I think, for parts of the Highlands, but uh, generally northwestern parts should stay dry, some bright, some, sun, some bright sunshine here, in fact, in places, but it will be rather grey and overcast for Northern Ireland, some further rain, sleet or a little bit of snow in places. The snow gradually clearing away from Wales, so yes, it's an improving picture here too. Now, by Thursday, there's our weather front. It's continuing to move its way northwards, but again, it's a weakening feature. But the main thing will be those winds really easing down. Just notice the ice bars opening up. So I think Wednesday night into Thursday, mist and fog will be our real problem. Some freezing fog patches in places. Still some snow flurries then from our weak weather front up across at Scotland, possibly the northeast of England, but otherwise a dry day for many of us.
By Friday, well, the isobars tightening once again, so the wind speeds increasing, particularly across these more northern and western parts of the UK, as an Atlantic weather system starts to push its way towards us. So this will continue to bring some slightly milder air, particularly across some western parts. The wind strengthening, and we will also see some rain as well, just running up from the southwest and up towards northern parts of the UK. So as we head towards the weekend, it is an increasingly unsettled picture. Some bands of rain moving through. Could be a little bit of snow mixed in there from time to time, but generally those temperatures picking up a little bit. Keep up to date, of course, by going online. Tonight at 10, standing by every word, one of Tony Blair's closest advisers defends the Iraq war. Alistair Campbell spends five hours answering questions from members of the Iraq inquiry. Thank he you, reveals that Tony Blair wrote to George Bush in the year before the war, signalling British support. If that can't be done diplomatically, and it has to be done militar militarily, Britain will be there. That would definitely be the tenor of his communication. Critics now want those Blair letters published in full. Also tonight, banned under anti-terror laws, the militant Islamist group which wanted to march through Wooten Bassett. What we have mainly been doing is inviting people to Islam, calling for the Sharia to be implemented and exposing the British government. If that amounts to terrorism, then, you know, I'm the biggest terrorist around. Bankers' bonuses, they could reach £50 billion globally. Bosses admit they can seem excessive. And it's snowing heavily again tonight. Wales and the southwest of England are bearing the brunt. Coming up later in the hour in sport, Campbell is making a comeback. The 35 year old has played for the Arsenal reserves tonight in the hope of making a permanent move back to the club he left four years ago. Good evening. For five hours today, Alistair Campbell fielded questions at the Iraq inquiry and vigorously defended his former boss, Tony Blair. Mr Campbell, who was Director of Communications at Number 10, revealed that Mr Blair had written privately to President Bush in the year before the invasion, signalling British support in the event of military action. This report by our correspondent Nicholas Witchell contains some flash photography. He's faced inquiry after inquiry on the Iraq war and his defence of Tony Blair has never wavered. Alistair Campbell was Mr Blair's Director of Communications and Strategy. No official was closer to the then Prime Minister. It was Tony Blair who decided, but it was Alistair Campbell who guided and advised. The inquiry took him first through the events of 2002 to the meeting in Crawford, Texas at George Bush's ranch. Was this, as a former British ambassador had suggested, the moment when Blair and Bush signed in blood to remove Saddam Hussein? Mr Campbell said that was wrong. You, you seem to be wanting me to say that Tony Blair signed up to saying, look, well, regardless of the facts, regardless of WMD, we're just going to get rid of the guy. It was not like that. Mr Campbell was then questioned about highly...